Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3, back once again with the three count with SP3 for February 20th, 2020. It is a Thursday. I'm hitting you pretty much in the middle of the week with them, some news to unpack. Uh, so much has gone on during the week. We had Monday Night Raw. We had Tuesday night with the premiere of NWA Circle Square. If you guys want to see myself, SP3, or Miss Chrissy Love, or Top Guy JJ, on the circle square where we would watch the circle square episode and kind of give our thoughts on the match as well as the promo please put in the comment section please go on twitter and say you got tag at true hill heat do the hashtag the circle square and tag nwa and let them know you want true hill heat on the circle square but on this edition of the three count with sp3 we're going to be talking about new names to enter the wwe hall of fame class of 2020 we're going to be talking about a famed new japan referee who had his last match refereed for new japan pro wrestling and for our third count we're going to be talking about all elite wrestling pulling talent from the wrestlecon weekend during wrestlemania weekend in tampa bay florida this april so let's get right into it for our first count we gotta be talking about the wwe hall of fame class of 2020 already announced officially by wwe that their class will be headlined by the animal dave De batista after batista retired from wwe and professional wrestling last year at wrestlemania 35 also along with him he's going to be a co-headliner with the original four members uh or i guess you could say four members because x-pac was definitely the sixth member he was called six but yes the famed members of the nwo that would be hollywood hulk hogan kevin nash scott hall and sean watman six pack they will be the co-headliners the nwo and batista for the hall of fame class of 2020 recently rumored we talk about it on true hill heat 63 which is going to be up on our youtube channel right now we talk about uh the bella twins as well as jushin thunder liger were also rumored to be added to the wwe class of 2020 but now we have two new huge huge names the first one is a name that has been talked about to be in the hall of fame for i want to say almost two decades now and that is none other than the british bulldog davy boy smith the british bulldog davy boy smith had three runs with the wwe a part of the uh, legendary tag team the british bulldogs back in the 80s with the dynamite kid he went from then from there to um a solo run with the uh, WWF where he had one of the greatest and most uh, remembered matches in WWF history in 1992 at SummerSlam in Wembley Stadium when he defeated Bret the Hitman Hart for the WWF Intercontinental Championship in front of 60,000 at Wembley Stadium in his home country. One of one of the fame matches this was after he had already married uh brett the hitman Hart's sister so there was an added element of family versus family one of the greatest matches you'll ever see and <laughs> a very interesting backstory to that if you haven't already heard about it uh he's had a couple of runs in wcw and made his final run with wwe starting in 1999 uh in the attitude era he came out with with the jeans a little bit more muscle muscular at the time uh unfortunately he passed away in uh 2002 uh due to heart complications and it's been years since uh a lot of the fans have begged wwe to enter him into the hall of fame so many Many great matches so many great memorable moments from his career i know his family as well uh davy boy smith jr harry smith and georgia smith they have been wanting him to be entered into the hall of fame recently uh harry smith actually made an appearance uh on the bump wwe the bump which uh is on wwe network which is actually filmed in wwe headquarters so it could be that he had to make a meeting with uh wwe to finally make the decision for his father to be entered into the hall of fame and decided to make a appearance on the bump on halloween on the uh valentine's day edition which featured his one of his best friends tyson kidd as well as his cousin natalia nightheart 
And the other name that has been rumored for the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2020 is the former longest reigning WWE champion in SmackDown history, John Brashaw Layfield. JBL. JBL had a couple of different runs with the WWE. He came in at Justin, I think it was Justin Hawk Bradshaw, managed by Zeb Coulter, aka Dutch Mantel. Uh, from there, he became one of the Blackjacks with uh, Blackjack Mulligan, and he was uh, Black, uh, the Bradshaw, the Blackjack, or whatever. I don't, I don't remember his name. But when this was, this is a couple of his earlier runs. From there, his most famous run is first most famous run was a part of the Acolytes uh, with the Ministry of Darkness, the Acolytes, which then became the APA, Acolytes Protection Agency, with the very famous uh, Attitude Era segments with them with their backstage office with the door with no walls and uh, famed a couple of backstage scenes in the Attitude Era with them playing poker, drinking beer, and getting paid off to be the production for a number of different competitors during the Attitude Era. From there, he had a solo run for a short time before he had his now most famous run as JBL, the next generation version of Ted DiBiase and kind of really the real life Bradshaw turned up to 1,000. He had a very famous uh, rivalry with Eddie Guerrero as well as Rey Mysterio. A couple of great matches with uh, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, John Cena, I quit match. Probably one of John Cena's uh, first great matches, especially in his, w his first WWE title run. That was John Cena's first really great matchup. If you haven't watched that match already, definitely go out and watch that because that was a match that got John Cena a lot of uh, respect in the locker room for how much blood he lost in that I Quit match with JBL from May of 2005. So definitely go back and watch that on WWE Network. But JBL definitely well deserve of a WWE Hall of Fame induction. So these are two really big names to go into the WWE Hall of Fame. And honestly, I'm going to say this, like we've heard names, we have Batista and NWO uh, confirmed and announced. The rumored names so far are the Bella Twins, the, the face of the Divas division for a large um, number of years before the women's revolution started. Uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, one of the greatest Japanese wrestlers of all time, the greatest junior heavyweight in New Japan pro wrestling history. He's made a number of, of appearances for WWE as well as WCW when they had a partnership with New Japan. Uh, British Bulldog, we've talked about his accolades and accomplishments, former WWF Intercontinental Champion, multi-time tag team champion, hardcore champion, and the first ever European champion, and JBL, the longest reigning, one of the longest reigning WWE champions in SmackDown history, former tag team champion, Intercontinental Champion, US Champion. I legit have not heard a name yet rumored or announced for the WWE Hall of Fame that is not well deserved, so bravo. WWE, if this is your Hall of Fame class of 2020, this blows away the last five to six years of Hall of Fames because I have always been able to name one or two people that did not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame on the other years, even when it was just rumors. So I'm very happy for all the names announced or rumored for the WWE class of WWE Hall of Fame class of 2020. For our second count, we got to talk about famed New Japan Pro Wrestling referee, Tiger Hotori. Tiger Hotori, uh, if you're a New Japan fan like me, you've seen him all the time. If it's not Red Shoes, it is Tiger Hotori that has refereed some of the greatest matches in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. He has been a mainstay in their backstage and in the locker room area, helping out with talent, number of different talent throughout the years. But he had his last New Japan event uh, this past Wednesday morning. It was the Tiger Hattori uh, retirement show, and his final match refereed with New Japan Pro Wrestling was was a great one. Number of great wrestlers in this matchup. It was a three on three six man tag team matchup of Chaos versus Los Inconables de Japón as Kazuka Okada, the Rainmaker, teamed up with the Stone Pitbull. Tomohiro Ishii and the former never never open weight champion Hiroki Goto to verse the LI 
IWGP uh, threesome of Tensuya Naito, the double IWGP champion, heavyweight and intercontinental, Shingo Takagi, the new never openweight champion, and Sonata. Uh, LIJ got the victory as Sonata did an O'Connor roll to get the pinfall victory over Goto. So this was all these guys have appeared in a number of different New Japan Pro Wrestling main events. These are all a main event or upper card guys. So this was quite the talented six wrestlers for Tiger Oatori to have his last uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling match to referee. He had a number of great moments on this show uh, after the L after the team of uh, Tanahashi, Koto Obushi, uh, fin, fin Juice versus the Bullet Club. Uh, Tiger Atori had a great scene where he uh, fought off Jado and Gato and gave them both low blows. Well done. <laughs> Tiger Atori is uh, a mainstay in New Japan. He's one of the unsung anger heroes, one of those guys that doesn't get a lot of uh, notoriety in New Japan, but he is very an intricate, an integral part of the growth New Japan has seen over the last decade. So Tiger Atori will be missed, but we are very happy that he had a great send off, a great retirement event, and we wish him all the best for his post wrestling career. And finally, for our third count, we got to talk about All Elite Wrestling with a little bit of controversy. WrestleCon weekend has been one of the major uh, conventions that has taken part of WrestleMania weekend over the last couple of years. WrestleCon uh, Super Show I went to last year, last year in New York City, one of the best events during WrestleMania weekend. But WrestleCon is really a great opportunity for professional wrestling fans to meet the current and past and future talent that you guys all want to see whether it's a legend like Greg the Hammer Valentine or Mick Foley whether it's a current star like Kenny Omega Chris Jericho or even the future stars like uh, Nyla Rose Chris Thatlander you have an opportunity if you're in the Tampa Florida area to meet all these stars go out your way to at least one day in Tampa, one day during WrestleMania weekend, go to WrestleCon and see all the stars that you guys want to see. But All Elite Wrestling is kind of putting a damper on that. Uh, All Elite Wrestling actually worked with WrestleCon to negotiate a couple of their wrestlers appearing at the WrestleCon convention. They basically made note and made sure to let WrestleCon know that none of their AEW talent would be allowed to wrestle on the WrestleCon Super Show. Uh, the only the only event that AEW is allowing a number of their talent to take part in is Joey Janela's Spring Break. I I believe that when Joey Janela signed with AEW, one of the um, notes in his contract was that he was going to continue doing the Joey Janela uh, Spring Break shows for GCW during WrestleMania weekend. Joey Janela's Spring Break has been one of the high profile and must buy tickets during WrestleMania weekend for almost the last five years or so. So Joey Janela having AEW talent and being the only event during WrestleMania weekend that would have AEW talent is definitely a really big draw for Joey Janela's spring break. And it's already a big draw during WrestleMania weekend. It just became a bigger draw by being the only one that has allowed a number of AEW talent to take part in. But AEW, as uh, reported by Fightful.com, has pulled Sammy Guevara and Darby Allin from the WrestleCon convention. They will not take part in uh, giving out autographs or taking pictures with the fans. Unfortunately, AEW pulled those talent. WrestleCon reported that they were not given a reason by AEW why why they were pulling these uh, two talents, Sammy and Darby, but they did uh, are allowing uh, talent like Chris Statlander, Nyla Rhodes to still take part of the convention. They won't be able to wrestle on the WrestleCon Super Show, but they are going to be giving out autographs and taking pictures with fans. Also, a, a couple of other AEW talent were uh, Kenny Omega, John Moxley, Chris Jericho. They have not been pulled from WrestleCon convention because their uh, bookings with WrestleCon were taken care of by an outside agency and not AEW. Smart move. The main eventers are smart. 
They care about their, their cheddar and they want to make these deals, make these bookings without AEW having a chance to block them. But unfortunately, guys, if you're in the Tampa, the Tampa, Florida area and you really wanted to meet Darby Allen or Sammy Guevara, unfortunately, you will not have that opportunity. Me, myself, I am kind of in the middle when it comes to this uh, topic. I understand AEW's point of view. They do a great convention called StarCast for most of their big events. Unfortunately, it has not been announced for uh, Las Vegas for Double or Nothing weekend, but fortunately, I can give you a little bonus count, even though it's not the weekend. Uh, Double or Nothing tickets went on sale this past Friday. They sold over 6,000 tickets, but it was not a first day sellout like the original Double or Nothing event last year. A number of uh, fans were asked about this by Wrestling Observer, as well as by Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer Radio, while he was out in, uh, at Port in Portland for TakeOver Portland, as well as his book signing. And he asked a number of, of uh, fans, and a lot of fans online or from Brian Alvarez or the fans that write into Wrestling Observer or the fans that are on our page, the True Hills group page on Facebook, a lot of them say because it not doesn't have a StarCast advertised for Las Vegas for Double or Nothing Weekend, that has caused a lot of people not to buy a ticket. A lot of people do not want to make the trip to Las Vegas for a one-day event, but just announced this, this week that AEW will be in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Arena for AEW Dynamite on May 27th. So they have the big event on the 23rd, Saturday, May 23rd, Double or Nothing in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. And they will be back at the MGM Grand, uh, Grand on Wednesday, May 27th for AEW Dynamite. So a couple of days in between, Cody Rose did a, a special media call this past week. And he did announce that AEW will be stacking the lineup for that whole week and doing a number of different events that could be autograph signings, meet and greets, maybe a convention. I feel like AEW is going to make their form of StarCast, not kind of use Conrad and not make it such a big event because they lost a lot of money last year during Double or Nothing weekend running StarCast. StarCast is really a money maker in Chicago, but it's, it hasn't really hit as well in Las Vegas during Double or Nothing weekend last year or in Baltimore during Full Gear weekend in November. Those were money lost for Conrad and StarCast, and that's the main reason why StarCast has not been advertised and it's not happening in Las Vegas for Double or Nothing Week this year, unfortunately. But AEW talent, they need to worry about uh, basically, especially their future stars, is making them hot commodities for their different conventions, meeting rates. So I understand them pulling Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen, which are two of the younger talents where when they were signed, they really weren't pegged as future stars. They had guys that they signed like MJF and Jungle Boy that were immediately pegged as the guys that they would build the future around. But Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara are two young guys who were not signed, did not have that type of buzz when they were signed, but have created their own buzz after the fact. Darby Allen has Honestly, he's the young guy that has raised has raised his stock the most since AEW started. Whether it was his time limit draw at Fighter Fest against Cody, whether it was his great match in Philadelphia against Chris Jericho, or the week prior where he had his famous skateboard ride down the ramp before attacking Jericho, his great match with uh, John Moxley on TV, his great match, uh, his rematch with Cody in uh, Jacksonville, Florida on January 1st. Darby Allen is a guy that has raised his stock tremendously in the past six months since he's been with AEW, and he's just going to continue to raise his stock even more. I see him as a future AEW world champion in a couple of years. Sammy Guevara, a part of the inner circle, he has really become one of the most annoying, <laughs> uh, annoying chicken shit heels in AEW. And if you watch the All Elite recap right here on True Hill Heat, you guys know Jimmy and Cash hate that guy. So he's doing a good job as a heel. That's all I say. He's getting the heat from our guys. He's getting some real true heel heat. 
So I agree with AEW in kind of making them hot commodities, pulling them from WrestleCon, and makes them a bigger draw when they do a meet and greet under the AEW brand. But I kind of do feel for WrestleCon and the fans going out to Tampa who will miss out on the opportunity to, to meet Sammy and Darby. That is an unfortunate thing. And honestly, they shouldn't have ever been advertised if they were going to be pulled. So it's very unfortunate. But I can kind of see in the middle of both sides where both sides are coming from. So that is all for the three count with SP3. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Do you guys agree with me? Do you think that JBL and British Bulldogs are deserving members of the class of 2020 for the WWE Hall of Fame? Do you, what is your greatest memory of Tiger Atori in New Japan Pro Wrestling? Whether that was throwing someone out around the ring, whether that was members of the Bullet Club, or even back in the day, members of Chaos, or even just a memorable moment with Tiger Atori that you had going to a New Japan event. And of course, put down in the comments section where you stand between this whole controversy concerning AEW pulling talent from WrestleCon. If you enjoyed this video, push that like button. All your likes and comments help us get more subscribers, more viewers to this YouTube channel. So we always thank you for all your support. And of course, push that subscribe button and push the bell to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Little Heat. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. This has been the three count with SP3 for February 20th, 2020. And I am signing off until next time.